Welcome back to The Ether, the show that disrupts the way you think about running your business. Join me, Brandon, and my co-host, Sean Delaney, the creator of What If, on today's episode. Our goal is to provide context around what we talk about so you have the clarity to cut through the noise and the confidence to grow and run a truly harmonious business. Let's jump in and take the next step to achieving business freedom. Let's do that. Let's let's do all of those things. Clarity and confidence. Is there anything more important for planning for a quarter than those two things? I don't think so. <laughs> right. No, I'm laughing. Some ridiculous things that might be a little more important. But those nope. two things are very important. Nope. Doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Stake in the ground. It's right. those two things. But things. that is, in all seriousness, what we are talking about. We are wrapping up. We're in the 12th week of 13 weeks of Q1. So the 12th week, the way we run our sprints, our quarterly sprints, is actually the last week of the quarter. Next week, the 13th week, is where we will review the numbers, set the targets for Q2, and then move on as of April 1st. This is it. Our our, our year, our 12-week year. We didn't write that book. No. You can look it up. Who did? 12 week. Great, great book. But it's... Now we've done, we've, we have our first year. Congratulations, Brandon. Happy new year <laughs> coming up. Is that, wait, does it, is it like Christmas right now? How, is that how that works? Do we get four out. Christmases? Go to bed early and see what's under the tree tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yes, it's the, we, we're, this is the 12th week. This is it. Brandon and I inside the inner circle with all the, People playing with us in there. We set our goals for the quarter, big targets. We got our projects lined up and we had a 12 week sprint. We're wrapping those things up. We're going to take stock next week. Level set. Where did we win? Make sure we celebrate those. We don't celebrate the small wins enough in business as entrepreneurs. Please celebrate those wins. And Look at the deltas and say, how do we, where do we fall short? How do we do better? You do that kind of post-mortem. This is all part of that cycle. That should all be happening next week. Must, must happen next week. How about this? Even if you didn't do proper planning for the first quarter, you just ran headlong from the holidays and the, and the eggnog and the <laughs> sugar plums. <laughs> oh my god things other people happening into the new year big goals and you didn't really set your targets right you took on too many things too much of the legacy the legacy stuff was par the course and it ate away at the new things you were going to do and now you're here and you fell right back into those ruts out oh, on the personal level it happens we've stopped going to the gym we're getting a little we're back in our old routines you know what? I know why I liked the donut in the morning. I'm going to go back to that. This is not this is not a real story. This happened to no one in the world. Okay? And it all kind of goes away. So, Brandon, before we went live, we, we were, I teased that the second quarter, like, that's, that's the meat and the sandwich. Yeah, I've never, so I've never heard you say this, and I was very angry that you just sprung that on me right before we went live and you wouldn't tell me. So, why, why, okay, so Q2, March, April, May, your, your birthday is in February, mine's in June, so that's obviously not it. Why are those three months, why is that the most important quarter of the year? Well, okay, all right, caveat, <laughs> because I'm not sure when your fiscal year is. Okay, out there. So people who say, say, oh, it's those months. It's not those months for me. I'm not talking about the months. I'm just saying that in any great endeavor, in any four quarter year, in, in whatever, wherever you're starting and ending that, the first quarter, that's where we're filled with hopes and dreams. We've done a lot of reflection. We finally took the time to do some reflection over the holidays and made some new choices people are setting new year's resolutions everybody feels like they're doing it the whole world seems like it's resetting because it's winter time and it's the new year great fresh start and so we make big bold pl plans not really 
taking stock of where we were and what legacy stuff is going to pull at us and who around us do we need to recruit to our new plans, whether it's in our life and our new diets and exercise goals, or whether it's our teams at work. And here we come back, we just, we land with big hopes and dreams and we run, 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 run. And we don't realize how much of all of that is based on willpower. We still have the same old decision fatigue that we had before. So we made a big, bold move to set a new target, new direction, new things. Things are going to be different this year. And, but we were still going off of all the old knowledge we had, all the old processes and subsystems sitting, running in our head. And we didn't change things at the core. And now we're, we were running on willpower and now it's starting to get depleted. And now well, at this point, I don't think it's starting easier. Hmm? I don't think it's starting to deplete statistically. I, we covered this in the beginning of the year. The um, by February 1st, 80% of new year's resolutions are in this context. Business goals for the year have already failed. You, the people have already given up, not, not failed. Like they have quit. So at this point, we're, we're eight weeks past that point. Yeah. We're long gone at this point. So it's, it's over. But, and that's, if that's, if you don't have now, that's if you came in without that structure. We right. had a structure. So even with like a 12 week structure, the first quarter, you're still, if you're new to this kind of planning or, or, or anything new, it's the new year, right? The first quarter is kind of hard to keep up that pace. Second quarter though, if you're doing a 12 week sprint and a third and in that 13th week doing the reflection, now's the time to get back on the scale and go, Ooh, I was doing good time to course correct or this year is going to be a giant failure we're going to be at the beach again this summer and things aren't going to go well now is the time to course correct so it is this is why the second quarter is where the stuff gets done because third quarter let's go let's go by the year so people don't i was going to say can we just clear the air here i i think if you operate on a fiscal year calendar and not a calendar year you're 17 times more likely to be a serial killer that's <laughs> got to be proven stats somewhere <laughs> you can use statistics to prove anything not innocent people know that so yes probably so let's just talk calendar year but let's talk calendar year because we might be talking to some sociopaths out there i don't know the in the summertime, you've got the summertime. Oh, Eddie's out on vacation. We really needed him for this project. People are gone. They're distracted. It's the summertime. Work's kind of there. You see, you see it when you're at the barbecue around 4th of July. How's work? Yeah. But it's there. We're doing things not with the intensity of second quarter, not with the intensity of the first half of the first quarter, January. Man, we're on fire. February, we're sucking wind. March, you better be paying attention. If you haven't, now's the time. Turn it around. Now, you have also the grace of knowing I really wasn't on it, and I started to fall back into my old habits. I really won't do it. This renewed purpose and vigor is why second quarter, man, it's the one I love. Because then the fourth quarter, you get people starting to think about the holidays. You're starting to get stressed out about it. They're starting to want to wind down. Nothing gets done around the holidays except holiday parties and all that garbage. And the only work that we squeeze out at the end of the year is when people are being judged by their performance for that year. They're in, in like this is corporate America kind of thing. Like, well, now we've got to, I got to quick get a whole bunch of stuff done so I can check out of this place for the holidays and not be thinking about it. That's the only, that's the little bit of. Honey, we squeeze out of that. Do you squeeze honey out of things? I don't know. Uh, so, no, that's not how it works. I don't know how it works. We milk the bees. Yes, <laughs> it comes from the milk of bees. I would still be a bee milker if I could get a spoon <laughs> small enough for me to down it. Anyway, I can't see anymore. Your eyesight goes. Anyway, so that's why this quarter people are going to get it done this quarter. So. What should they be doing, Brandon? What should people be doing around this time of year? What should they do next week in the 13th year? What are the kinds of things? 
Uh, they should listen to everything we say because we're going to tell them exactly how to do it. But let me just offer a quick little caution about what the what getting off track on your goals could have looked like because I already mm -hmm. said in February, most likely they've already given up to some capacity and not so much the business leader too, but I've seen this from my own employees where you as the leader, you come in strong and you're excited and there's, you know, there's that rah-rah and the team feel, everybody's excited. Your employees have gone back to their old ways by February 1st. Even if you're still moving forward, your team may not be fully on board. So we need to make sure your team's back on board. That's why we love these quick little sprints to get everybody back recentered. But I've had a lot of conversations with people recently about the other side of distraction that we don't typically talk about. And that is air quotes opportunity. And I've had so many people say there are so many opportunities right now that I'm on the verge of burnout because I can't ha handle all of them. Equally bad either giving up on your goals or having air quotes too many opportunities because then you're still scattered and unfocused and you don't know exactly where you're going. So what we're about to tell you is the right way. Yes, we're that egotistical. The right way to plan out one of these 12 week sprints and and plan out your your Q2. But Sean, where it always starts for us is revisiting your navigation. We got to go back to the core. Every time. And you don't have to say air quotes when you do air quotes. Well, this, this is a podcast too. So for, for those of you listening, I'm Italian. Sean's Italian as well. And we make a lot of hand gestures. So we're over here. If you're watching, we look like a bunch of idiots. But for those of you listening, I'm, I'm air quoting right now and you can't even hear it. See? It's like milking bees. You can't hear someone milk a bee. That's what we're doing with the air quotes. <laughs> New t-shirt slogan. Yeah. <laughs> You I'm can't hear it. someone milk. Well, then that so that's the begs the question. Why would that even be the answer? Is that what is the question that that is the answer to? Exactly. <laughs> that's the backside of the T-shirt. Yes. Like, well, yeah. They're not milking bees in there. How do you know? Well, I, I can't <laughs> hear them. Can you hear? Can you hear bees being milked? <laughs> is that how we determine? Why we always talk about stupidity with animals on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong with us. <laughs> Because everyone should know this is every conversation we have. It is <laughs> just a microcosm of our day. And if you're not having fun running your business, you're cool. not running your business. What are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> Stop everything. Are they milk milking bees in there? Well, I don't hear anything. And that's the answer. <laughs> it's what, that's the answer to that. It's like Jeopardy. And now we have the question. Yeah. Are they milking bees in there? Correct. All right. So... <laughs> navigation how do we find the bees no that's not what navigation is navigation we visit navigation first so why start with navigation it seems like really do i have to yes you have to do i have to brush my teeth tonight dad no it's okay rinse your mouth out with soda yes you have to brush your teeth so do i have to go back to navigation we do we kick the tires on it even if it's even if it's for just a little bit you have to come back and say because that may be where the delta is. Why did our projects fail? Oh yeah, we were trying to do a whole bunch of projects that are antithetical to who we are and who we, who we really are. We said, yeah, but I said I wanted to be a new person this year. Well, you said you wanted to lose weight, right? You, But you went at it as if you were someone who loved being in the gym. But do you love being in the gym? No, I actually hate it, right? Are there other ways you could lose weight? Yes. Ways that are closer to who you are? Yeah. Yeah, maybe those should have been our projects. And so now it's the time to look at why did we deviate from our projects? Did we give up on them because we gave up on these things because there was too much drag? We were running a race, pulling a parachute. Why were we doing that? If we're not at the NFL combine, I have no idea why anybody's doing this. We have so much drag on us because we're trying to run uphill pulling our team. They haven't bought in, so they're not running. I'm dragging them to a place I'm not even sure where I'm going in the way that someone who I think I need to be to be to get there would do it. And I'm not fully equipped for that. So those projects all die and everyone goes back to their ruts and there I'll go back to my way of doing things because at least it felt better. At least I was getting something done. Might not have been the right things. I was either working on the wrong things or working on the right things wrongly, <laughs> but, but 
what I should have been doing is saying, well, who am I? Who are we? So let's put this back in the business context. That's an, an analogy that we're trying to make there with the weight with, with weight loss. In the business context, it's well, who are we? Who are we serving? Did these new things that we said we were going to do this year start with the customer in mind? Did we did we say do we start with our core values and say do we all now still believe these things? These new things that we want to do are they a reflection of us manifesting and actualizing those things that we all say we believe, or do we need to have new beliefs? And then think about, do we all still want to be here? Because do we all share these new beliefs? Time to think about our team makeup as well. So yeah, we've level set now on the core beliefs. They're the same. Great. So what's next? Is our mission the same? So this is all, this is a precursor to, let's write this down, Brandon, because what we're doing next week together, just me and Brandon saying, let's review our core values. We say the same thing. We still feel the same thing right here. Yes, to our core, absolutely. Great. Next thing, do we still say serve the same mission? We still want that same thing? Yes. Now that we've had contact with the enemy, do we still believe in freedom? Yes. Great. We're going to still fight that fight. And we still serve the same people, generally, because we're not going to fully go into our value proposition together next week. But yeah, yes, serve the same people. Awesome. And so then our five-year vision. Are we on track for it? Hopefully still, because it's five years out. But this is where where Brandon said, if we take too long to course correct, a few degrees being off course, we know that over 100 miles, you're way off course. And so a, for a five-year journey, a few degrees off, if not calibrated now, could require huge swings back to get us back on track. We're scrapping that, unless we're scrapping that five-year vision. We've already seen something. Probably not likely in one sprint. Yeah. Which is why you do them every quarter instead of once a year, instead of once every three years. Dust it off. <laughs> Let's get out the strategic planning book. We haven't looked at this thing in a while. Let's see. Cell phones are a fad. When did we open this last one? <laughs> so, <laughs> um. We now need to cal calibrate on that five-year vision to the one year, to the one quarter. How far off are we? And what do we need to do in order to recalibrate that? What new projects then do we need to, to allocate? Are some of these now, some of our old projects as we close them out, business as usual? Did something come out of it that we changed the world and started business? We've created processes around it. We've trained everybody on what those processes are. We documented those processes, trained people on what they are. Now we're all running. Great. That's not a project anymore. Shut it down. What new projects are we going to do? How are we going to reallocate now our time and effort? Yes, it's okay for a project to spill over. So we didn't fully hit the mark, but you have to, you can't load on. You only have room for three projects for the number of people you have, the number of tension you have outside of your business as usual. Why are you trying to do five projects? Well, one of them spilled over and we want to do three new ones now. And then we had another one that kind of is, well, that's just always there. No, that one's business as usual. This one is okay to extend it, but don't start something new on top of that when you don't have the resources to it. Because then four becomes seven becomes 19 and you're dying on all with all these open loops that are all dragging attention. Even if you're not consciously aware of it, you know those other projects are there and they are nibbling away at your attention and your willpower to keep going. We've got to get you off of the willpower dosing machine to mainline willpower every morning to get you up and, and then you're dead by two and you want to go home and sell your business. So, And that's the business as usual things. Those are either past projects if you've operated in this way or it's just things that you've always done you also need to be careful that this is a time to review that stuff too because again another conversation i love talking to entrepreneurs every single day because i we just i hear so many things that i'm sure everybody falls into but it, it, they never really occurred to me so talking to somebody again yesterday and the business as usual project i'll keep this very vague to not reveal identities here but the business as usual project was not directly serving revenue, company growth, or client retention. 
And it really had no impact on the overall growth of the company long term. It was something that they wanted to do to serve their clients ultimately and, and potentially to attract new clients. But it was way off from the three projects that they did need to focus on for Q2. So I said, you know what? That's a passion thing. That's a business as usual thing. You can choose to do that. But my professional advice to you would be pause. So delay it in the four Ds that we've talked about. Delay that until Q3 and actually make that a project to grow it in Q3 instead of yeah. just keeping it as is and, and eating up your time. So be careful if you're going to take on three new projects, you also have to look at the things you're already doing and not overwhelm yourself, like Sean just said, but it can be confused as business as usual. 100%. So you, so a couple of things to unpack from there. I used to have way a million years ago, I had somebody reporting to me. She was fantastic at managing projects and got into the details of things to a level that I never wanted to operate at. I was more of the strategic thinker, which she needed from me. But how I used to think about her was if I needed to, this isn't what the business was. This is a ridiculous example to prove the point. If I needed to train a dog to jump over a fence, she was the one to get that dog to jump over that fence. Now, if three months into that project, they removed the fence, you would still find her with that dog jumping in the air. <laughs> you say, what are you doing? What are we doing? Still got to get this dog over that fence. What fence? The fence is gone. <laughs> But the project is to get the dog to jump over the bed. Like there was no, we did not ever pick our heads up to look around to say, is anybody still here? Why am I, <laughs> what are we still doing? <clears throat> so that can happen. So that can happen in a project where people feel like, well, we got to finish this out, right? Nobody likes a quitter. Yeah, but it was to get the dog over the fence and the fence isn't there anymore. We don't need this project. So that can happen on a project, especially if it's a pet project that you just love and love the idea of getting it done. If there's no need for it, let's stop those. But yes, business as usual has to be looked at all the time because I, especially because at times your employees will hide those things from you because there's security in the job. I pulled this lever. Anything attached to that on the other side of the wall? Never been over there and I'm afraid to look because there might not be. So... I'm just going to keep on whatever. <laughs> so you need to constantly be thinking about. That's why I love the idea of short sprints with a few targeted projects that are on top of. We say we've analyzed what we are doing, business as usual, with the client in mind. This is why doing it as a value proposition review is so powerful. <clears throat> because whether or not that business as usual work is important must first be determined by whether or not it's important for your for delivering on your brand promise those are are inviolable processes so that work must be done we don't get to change work on change anything else or doing anything other thing and until we are sure that we are delivering on our brand promise now Bump up all the processes that you're doing against that. The rest of them should be all in service of you and your mission. That is your internal functions. Now we say, what of these can go, if any? They're all incredible. We need them all. Great. Are they all optimized? If not, that might be a project. If so, great. Then they can stay there. What's the bandwidth after that? Those were all the must-haves. Well, this is our small bandwidth. With that, what things must we change in order to stay on track for that vision? Because the vision is an expansive one. Business as usual cannot be. That cannot be the answer. Unless your five-year vision is to do exactly what we're doing right now. Because we don't want to expand, grow, change at all. Okay. That's not anybody we're talking to. So then every, anyone listening to this is saying, yeah, in five years, we want to be dramatically different. Great. Well, then you need to be allocating your resources today in order to get there. We already know, realize we have very few of them now after all the business as usual stuff, both external, customer driven and internal, us driven. And so what's left? Probably enough for three projects to change things. I don't know the sky, size of the projects. Might be one, might be 10, depends on how big your company is, how many hands you have pitching in, but whatever that number is, 
It should be limited, capped, quantifiable, and should be to effectuate something you can get done in the next 12 weeks. We're not going to do a four-year project. Well, but it's going to take four years. Yeah, but one part of it's going to take one year, right? Yeah. And part of that's going to take three months. Yes? Clearly. Well, yeah, break it up into the, in, into the component steps. Because nobody wants to work on a, we've talked about that. We talk about that in our project management section, but not everybody's heard that. Like that's the difference between I'm going to build a cathedral versus, well, I'm a bricklayer now until the day I die. That doesn't sound good. I want to know that what am I doing? You're going to help build this arch that's going to be in this cathedral that's going to stand forever. Great. That I can get done. That feels good. I can celebrate that win. I can be done with it. Even if the next part is, the next project is to build another arch right next to it. That's good. At least I got a breather. I got to celebrate with my team and I got to think about what went well, what didn't. So the next part goes better. Even just pausing to do that is the benefit, is a benefit, is a reason to plan projects in these short sprints. Yeah, we usually don't do that. I mean, it's it's always we plan big year long goals and then maybe we stop and celebrate. Maybe we don't. But they're so big and there's so much space between planning the actual execution, mostly distractions, and then the review of it. People forgot the emotions and momentum that was tied to it when they started. So at the end of the year, it's like, eh, it's I'm glad it's over in most cases. So the the purpose of doing it in these 12 week sprints, um, really really powerful. Actually, I was surprised by this too because I'm I'm aware that in a five year long vision, in a one year goal, even most of your progress is going to come in the last third to quarter it's that hockey stick exponential growth right the same thing happens in a 12-week sprint and i was blown away by this because we had talked just a couple weeks into this quarter and i was like these things are not working like we are not on track and we talked last week about those same exact things and i said we blew these things out of the water like and that was two weeks before the end of the quarter. So just remember when you shorten that cycle, that quick growth at the end is still possible. And that's what really compounds over time. You just don't feel it's progress the whole time. You just yeah, don't feel progress. it to the end because it takes more effort at the beginning. You're building muscles, you're building the discipline. You haven't seen the, so the people who don't, feel the progress along the way are this are the people who fiddle with the thermostat constantly trying to get the middle temperature because <laughs> well it's still cold in here let me let me turn it up well it just doesn't cost give it a minute and so now they've overcranked it now it's blowing everyone's going oh my god it's hot in here who touched this uh, it's so hot and they crank it down and now until everyone's going now oh, it's cold in here and we do that all day you're already changing the temperature you turned it you don't feel it yet, but it is already working. And so, yes, we had that conversation when you were like, man, we are tanking it. It's like, no, 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 no. The signs are there. The look at the things that we're doing. You were like, I can't yet just throw, you know, 300 pounds up over my head. I can't do it. It's like, no, no, no. But Brandon, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're building towards that. We're building assets. It will it will come around. It will take off. It's just inch by inch. And yes, now we've seen it. So it's a great point because imagine then imagine then as you're approaching that five years, we've talked about this. You're gonna be a different person. That's why every time we do it, we say it has to be breathless at the end for you to go. I just don't know how I could ever do that. Perfect. Perfect. Because if you can see it now, you're not honoring the fact that it's going to be a joke by the time you approach it. Because you're going to say, man, I didn't think I could do this. Of course I could do this. I should have set a much bigger goal. Yes. So we're going to set that now. We're going to know that we're going to feel it most at the end. So what we do in one quarter of the first year and a five-year change to a dramatically different place, that is no judgment. 
has no place to judge how well we're doing on that. Except in to say, are we going, are we, do we not have this right in how we go about these projects? Is there something we can do here? Oh, we missed it by two. Let's correct something now. Because two over five years is going to be 200,000 and we're not going to make it. So let's just adjust here. But it doesn't mean I've got to be that person, right? Don't expect because you're not all the way up here in that hockey stick. You're here. It's good. Was it progress? Yes. Was it 100% on? Now it was a little off. Let's get it back. Are our strategies working? Yes or no? That's the conversation you're having here. And then based on all that we talked about, resource constraints primarily, preserving your mission for your, for your key stakeholders and the people you're trying to serve, as long as we're doing that and then serving us and our team, what bandwidth do we have and what do we want to change? Well, next... And if you're using our architecture, we might say, we did great on the project we had around our ubiquity. Do we still need to do that? So is it rinse and repeat, i.e. business as usual, keep cranking out the ether, keep cranking out harmonious at lunch. If that's the answer, that's the answer, then that's just, then it's not a project anymore. But if, uh, and maybe ubiquity is not the focus. Maybe now it's order. We're going to be talking about our process improvement and process automation. Maybe that's where we go. Or we could say, no, while we have business as usual, there's another project we want to do in ubiquity. Oh, what's that? Totally different idea. Great. That's a different project. Might still hit the same score or same area, same discipline, but it's got to be a distinct project. If it's the same then we need to take that off and we need to acknowledge whatever resources, time, money, people, that that will take. Um, but then we might have a project on making that more efficient, let's say. So we say, it's not really rinse and repeat. It's just, we want a project. It is gonna take time to trim off pieces of this process. That's gonna be one of our projects. That might be a way to go too. But these are the conversations that you, the listener, I had to say that because Brandon reminded me, you can't see what I'm pointing if this is, if you're just listening. I'm not pointing. Was I pointing? You pointed once. Okay. Well, listen, we got to get out of here. So let's yeah, yeah. recap real quick. Yes. Step one, navigation. You're planning for Q2. Whether you did a sprint in Q1 or not, you visit navigation. Mission, vision, values. Are they intact? Are we cool with all of them? Awesome. Yes. Moving on. We're not. We're most likely not rebuilding all of that stuff. It's a visit, see the delta, and then we're moving on. Phase two is operate. We didn't specifically yeah. say that. That's what we call it. Picking your three projects and picking how are you going to make those things come to life in your organization and move your old projects to business as usual, remove business as usual. Step three, we did not specifically say this, but put it on your calendar. That's it. Easy peasy. Schedule your projects. Thank schedule you. the priority. Make sure they get done and they don't get tossed to the side. That's how you lose momentum. So if you want to do more in-depth on this, you want to do it our way, you want to do a 90-day sprint with us, first step, whatif.com. It's on the screen if you're watching. Go take the bad and we'll tell you exactly what those three projects should be to get your company back under control and on track for Q2, 3, and 4 this year and every year in the future. Sean, you got to go milk some bees. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> bees won't wait. We'll see you next week on the Ether.